All right, there we go. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ESO Daily. I am your host, Mystic Raven. All right, guys, so um, it's going to be kind of a crazy day today because I've been getting a lot, and I mean a lot, of trolls who think they know what they're talking about because they watch the mid-max players and what they do, and I don't use their configurations. Uh, I use my own configurations, I do my own testing, I go over things, and today I'm going to kind of go over this once again, um, because why not? So I'm on the PTS, let me make sure I am streaming, let's hope, so yeah, I'm live, perfect, alright, so anyways, so we're going to go over this, right? I have currently the willpower, Julianos. I'm using um, the Inferno staff for now, the Asylum. I could switch out to the Maelstrom, but right now I'm just going to show, like a master weapon or you know a um, you know a weapon of theirs. I'm going to use a buff because what I want to do is show why I'm not using trial sets, right? So I'm going to go over this. We're going to use a 5-3-2 configuration, right? We're going to keep the Julianos with the Undaunted Passive for the 6%. So I have one medium and I have one heavy. The rest of it's pretty standard. I use the Valken on this one. You can whatever, on whatever. But three-piece Moon Dancers, that's what they're telling you, right? That's what they're saying. Three pieces of Moon Dancers. I swear to God. Okay, so the first thing I want to go ahead and do on this is I'm going to do a static parse. For anybody who doesn't understand what a static parse is, it's basically referencing one ability and it'll go across the board. So if one ability is affected by any said set, it will carry for all the, damage mod the damaging effects. That's why you always want to go static, because when you're going through a target dummy, rotation, morning rock, rotation, human error can be affected, right? So if you fuck up during your rotation, if you fuck up in any situation, it's going to affect the output. Static is always, always, 100% by the book in MMO History 101, Morning Robert, in history of MMOs, all elite, all elite players go static. Every one of us do it, right? It doesn't change. If you're going from a rotation setup, human error and rotation can affect your output. Static is always the way to go because it's not going to lie. It's not going to change the fact of what that ability is going to do on said buff, target, proc, what the fuck ever. Static is always going to stay true. So what your top end damage ability is with all buffs applied, static is going to remain 100% across the board. So anyways, we're going to use funnel as our static. So funnel health is going to be our static effect. Uh, one second real quick. Sorry about that. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I got to do something. Anyways, um, so here we go. Willpower, three piece, right? So I'm going to give myself the buff. Okay, I'll do it prior to the buff and after. Okay, that's the rest though. This is the Astro. I'm just going to hit the funnel till we get some crits. 12 9. Okay, 12 9. See, it's pretty consistent. Okay, now we're going to add the buffs. So I'm going to add the Empower, I'm going to add the Combat. We'll hit again. Now we get 14-4. Right? Now, Slayer is up on the three-piece. Because they say 5% will carry. 
with the applied effects. Well, whatever's whatever. So now we're going to go willpower. And I covered this, though everybody was debating me. I was the first to talk about this. I was the first. Okay, willpower is out damaging. And you're going to see it. So we'll do prior and after. Okay. 12.9 prior to buff. That's more than the moon dancer. Three piece moon dancer. Add the buff. There you have it. 14.44, and now I'm getting a 14.5. There it is. There it is. Mid max what? Mid max what? Who's who's mid maxing? Who's mid maxing? Those guys? I don't think so. I don't think they are. They're not mid maxing shit. They want to tell me that a trial set currently is outperforming three piece willpower? That's bullshit. It's bullshit. With Warhorn applied, it could carry over, but you'd have to have 100% uptime on Warhorn for that to occur, right? It would have to be 100%. Willpower is always going to d deliver more on your static. Hence, throughout the entire rotation, you will. Now, let's go to the Inferno staff here. So, I'm going to talk about this. So, currently, I have the Maelstrom Resto, but I have the Asylum Inferno. Okay. Now, let's go over this for Master Weapons, for example. I'm going to go ahead and hit with this till I get a crit. So, I'm getting 12.9, right? Now let's go back to pack. Let's go back to, to the pack. Now I'm not going to enchant because I don't want any enchantments to influence the, because the asylum's only got restore. So I'm not enchanted on this. I don't want the enchantment proc to influence the output. We're going to put the Nurnholm because the staff was um, infused. You could go Nurnholm, that's fine on staff. Preach, Mystic. Thank you, Mustang. 12-9. Look! What the fuck are these motherfuckers talking about? What the fuck are they talking about? That oh, I want to know what they're mid-maxing. When they do their tests, what the fuck are they testing? Because I have no problem with the players. I don't have a problem with said player. I have a problem with their cult. I have a problem with their trolls coming in talking shit. Does the target dummy count as a dungeon or trial monster? Yes. Yes. No. It's, it counts as a trial or a target. Uh, see, we had that debate rock on PTS because people were like, oh, it's bugged. No, it's not. It never fucking was. It counts as a trial monster. It counts. You'll see the buff indicator on the on the moon. So if I switch back, you'll see the buff icon that I get. Right? Now look, when I hit it, you'll see the Slayer buff. No, didn't pop up, but it counts. These are considered dungeon monsters. There it is. Like, well, there's major savagery, but... See, there's the Minor Savagery buff. See it up here in the corner? We can see it up in the corner here. The Minor Savagery uh, buffs applied when you hit target. So yeah, it counts. It definitely counts. And that's my issue. This is my issue with these, these people, these trolls. Coming in and whatever. Now, I don't use a 532 configura configuration. I don't do it. I use what they call a double stack. A double stack configuration is going to be, let's go ahead and I'll go into my inventory. I'm going to go into supplies. Okay, I've got, I use on this build War Maiden. So I'm going to grab um, some War Maiden. I need the jewelry set for sure and I need a sword. And I'm going to have to glyph one of the jewelry. So I need the sword. Precise, that's perfect. And I also need... Um, a, a glyph. Jewelry glyph. 
Jewelry, War Maiden. Let's go into um, enchantments, jewelry enchantments. Okay. Okay, so I don't use this configuration at all. They use a master or whatever for the proc, and you can do that. I've said that multiple, multiple times, right? I've said that. I have said that you can do that. That's just no biggie. If I wanted to, I could rock this and I'm going to get 12-9. All buffs applied. Eight three base. Let's keep that buff going on so I can land a crit. 14-4-4 with the Moon Dancer. All right. Okay, so I'm going to switch this out. I'm going to put a War Maiden shoe. I'm going to put a War Maiden necklace. I'm going to put War Maiden ring. I need one enchanted. So I don't have both regens. Okay, I got that, got that, got that. Okay. Now I'm going to switch out... Um, my inferno staff for my uh juliana sword and my war maiden see now i'm on the double okay so now i'm double stacked this is a double stack okay same thing i want to do i'm going to apply the buff What the fuck do they know? What the fuck do these bitches know? What the fuck do they know? Going to talk about my build and my builds and how I roll it? These guys don't know what they're talking about. They don't. They really don't. The double stack is always going to be more productive. I can take the willpower though, right? But it's not going to yield as much. Just because of the way, because when I'm double stacked, I'm getting the extra spell damage towards my magical abilities. That's static. That goes across the board for all my magical abilities, my magic damage abilities. So there, these guys, and everybody wants to talk about Maelstrom and whatever staffs, you can use them. I'm not saying you can't. But like this configuration right here, if I was going to go with this, I have to take a look at the loss. What I'm losing. I'm losing spell damage. So I want the Nernhorn staff. If I'm going to go with the Maelstrom staff. So I keep that. Right? So I would put the Maelstrom staff on there. And then when I go over to the character sheet. My spell damage is still increased. That's what I've been telling my viewers. You don't have to have it. But your fourth piece on a double stack is reflected to what you're missing in your character sheet value you know so if my my spell crit drops if it was a precise if it was a, a critical value i'd want to replace the critical value with precise if it's spell damage i'd want to take the nern home if it's max i take infused <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and that's what it is they want you to believe, I don't use trial sets since Horns of the Reach. I'm not going to put a trial set on a Magic Good Player. I'll put it on Stam because I can get the benefit from the double stack in the proc. So I can re have more rec uh, recoup uh, abilities with Ophidian. I can have the debuff abilities with um, Alkosh and so on and so forth. I can get the boost from War Machine. And that's, that's what, it, what it's going. So when these guys want to talk about mid-max, they're, they're failing to realize how the math works. Slayer is a percentage value. It's true. It can, it can outproduce willpower when everything is applied. But you'd have to have all buffs applied, 100% uptime with Warhorn. With the Warhorn. You're not going to get 100% uptime with Warhorn. Hence, you're losing DPS on your base. That's the way it goes. You can't, that's, that's basic math. 
you know, it's percentage value. It's not a, it's not base value. Percentage value is not going to determine base value. Base value will carry up to a certain point where percentage will exceed. That's the difference. So mid max, what is what I have to ask my trolls for all the trolls out there who are going to ask me and say, Oh, well, you're not using moon dancers. No, Am I, am I using willpower? Willpower outperforms Moon Dancers, and I'm still not going to use it. Why? Because I'm using the double stack configuration. I'll lose in on the back end. I can use a Maelstrom staff if I choose to. It's not required because it, the proc is going to affect targets, light attack targets within the field. That still isn't relative. Does anyone know what the dailies are? Uh, morning, Lewis. Uh, no, I must think I haven't been on yet on um, live. I wanted to do this because I have troll. I literally, I have a shitload of trolls, guys, and you all know this. I have a shitload of trolls who are all going to debate with me, and they're going to act, act like I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to this game. I'll, I'll say that all the other tubers are skilled. They're skilled, but I got 21 years. I got 21 years. You can't come at me and say that my shit's toxic when you're brainwashing the player base. Basically saying you're mid-max, you're, lo you're looking for bis, and you're looking for all this shit. Every rule applies different for each class based on passive, so each set's going to be different. Same thing with configurations when you're taking a look at how to properly build and maximize damage output. Flaws in rotation are going to be reflective to output. That's why hardcore, hardcore, old school MMOs will always tell you, what's the static value? What is your static value? You always, always go from static. And that's why target dummies are not parses. They're a reference. They're a tool. They are not a parse. They never will be a parse because it's never going to be accurate ever. And you always use this to, to determine static value. It's a tool. Simple. It's just a tool. But yeah, people want to come and bash my builds. My builds are outperforming majority of their builds. Am I trashing their builds? Am I saying my builds are better? No, I'm not saying my builds are better. I'm not saying my builds are more productive. I'm saying from a static point, my builds is beating a lot of other builds out there. And why? Because I'm not a theory crafter. I'm not a theory crafter trolls i'm not i'm a class builder there's a difference i know what i'm looking for in value and in the numbers the only thing i need to know is how am i using this class in that role and to get it at a proficient value and have fun that's it I want to provide for the common players. I don't want to go ahead and say, oh, this is the only way you do it. That's, that's bullshit. Everybody here knows that. You guys know that. It's bullshit. They're full of shit. Build your way. Play your way. What works for you might not work for me. You might need more sustain in your rotation. You might need more value in your Magicka recovery than I do. That's going, to deter, that's going to improve your DPS until you can manage resources. When you can manage resources, you can drop the value and increase your spell damage. That's, that's how this game's designed. There are in different values based on player each individual player's play style. Morning, Todd. What's up? But yeah, I don't use their configurations. And I never flipping will. I'm going to do my test. I'm going to go based off of my values. If I determine that... It's worth the headache. It's worth the headache to incorporate a master maelstrom or asylum weapon. I'll do so. But currently, the marginal differences is marginal. You know, it's literally marginal. But I just wanted to do this, this vid today because a lot of people still are on the whole 532 with um, Moon Dancer. And as I demonstrated, it's less value, way less. Because when I go from a static value and I apply all said buffs or whatever, so let's just say I hit. And I get 15-1 without the, um, the blessing, right? Let's say I go back to their configuration
which is whatever. Now that's Inferno, right? It should be. Right. Because it's going to uh, increase the single target. What the fuck? It's not even close. Oh, hold on. Forgot to put on the Juliana shoes. That's another thing. I was about to say, wait, something is off right there. That's way too low of a drop. Okay, we got the five. Let's do that again. So 15-1. They can keep their fucking shit. They can keep their shit. Keep it. I'll stick with my shit. But this gives me a chance to thank all you guys on in um, in chat. Thank all my viewers for sticking with me. Because honestly, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm I'm ever going to be better than anybody. I'm not. I'm just a gamer. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to provide builds for average players to get through content. Um, that's all I try to do. That's it. I I I was a former elitist, and no offense to the mid max or the wannabes. 21 years is 21 years, right? I tested for the top companies in the industry for a reason. You ain't going to take that knowledge from me. There's no fucking way, no fucking how, period. And they all can joke about it, but here I am. I'm showing it. I've proven it over and over and over and over again. What is, what isn't? Proof is in the pudding, it's not fucking made up. It's not fluff. It's not clickbait. It's what it is. So at this point, are you worth, even on a, if you say you're, you're staying with the 532 configuration, would I want a male strap, a male staff, uh, a maelstrom or not maelstrom, let's say master or asylum. Would I want the maelstrom or, um, or the master or the asylum weapon over the pack? Currently, no. The, the, the thing about it is, is this, when I go into the passives, I'm getting an 8% boost, right? To the Inferno staff's passives. Oh. So down here with ancient knowledge, the flame staff's going to increase my damage with single target abilities, but yeah, the proof is definitely in the pudding. You're right, Todd. I love you, man. Love ya. Flame staff is increased by 8%. Now, Twin Blade and Blunt only gives us 5. That's a 3% loss. Your info has boosted the damage of my builds hands down. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, man. I this is I do it for you guys, man, every day of the week. You know, these guys want to tr talk trash. You know, they want I'm not I'm not targeting the YouTubers. Don't get me wrong. I'm not targeting today the YouTubers. I'm targeting their cult. I'm targeting their wannabes that's who i'm targeting because they're referencing these players right when they don't know themselves and then they think that their their law their word is law and it's gold and it's not it's not they're skilled players they're young they're young they have two maybe three years in maybe four i got 21 i got 21 years <laughs> I've, I've alpha test some of the the devs in the industry know me my name they will, add, I will get email shots and say, Mystic, we want you in on this. Why? How? Who? What? What are you doing? You know, I don't, I haven't tested for the last couple of years. I've turned down tests and stuff. I've uh, walked away, but there for years, I was a tester for a lot of the top companies in the industry because not only was I bug hunting, I was finding more proficient ways of using um, the game for each, whatever they're trying to accomplish. Um, it all differed on each game in the model, but you know, they're, they're skilled, they're skilled, but they're young. They're just young. It, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And from a mathematical perspective, you know, Gilliam references math and he's good with his percentage values. He's good. Um, he needs to work on indifferent values and the offsets of acceptable loss. Once he can uh, figure that out, um, he'll be good. It's because he doesn't just say, do this. He shows math and statistics. Problem of it is, I just showed you on a static destruction. I just proved your favorite players wrong. I just did it. 
That's math. Right there. There it is. There's your math. There's your math. And I kept it simplistic. I used to go over spreadsheets, right? When I did games, I used to have Excel and I used to do um, like mathematical portfolios on armor sets and stuff, values and rotations, things like that. I don't do that no more. I'm not going to be anal. But when these players come in and they're going to say three piece moon dancer, bullshit, bullshit. When you have the mid max players, not even running one player with five pieces of infall and dropping off an 8% guarantee. I'm going to say bullshit. Bullshit. Don't call yourself mid-max if you, don't, if you aren't testing every potential avenue of value. It's, it's not a biased situation. No, I love you. I'm saying that's why you helped his DPS. Oh, okay. Thank you, Destruction. Thank you. Sorry. I owe you an apology. And there it is. I'm not a prideful person. Um, I do want to say, oh, that's fine. I, I thought, you know, I get so many trolls, Destruction, and I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. But, um, you know, the, the thing about it is, this is why. When, when they said Nernholm's okay for PvP, but not PvE. I said bullshit. It's making a comeback. It's going to affect your Julianos because it's going to offer the most spell damage on base. That's not always going to be the clear cut with every class. And that's a fact. Because, like, for example, if I wanted more back end on my uh, burn for my Templar, I wouldn't want more Magicka. So a set like Spinners would be more productive if I want more on the burn, but I lose up on the upfront damage output. So I have to sacrifice. I have to make a call because it scales max Magicka. I have to make that call. I have to be kind of deci decisive. Gilly may be good. He is boring, so it doesn't matter. I only watch you and Zai. Zai is definitely the best. Um, I, that's my dude for life. Zai does this exact kind of stuff the exact way I do it. Because we have to stay impartial. We have to. I miss Mystic yelling, uh, yelling my uh, balls. Anyone else? <laughs> Don't know the math statistics etc it's more important to me how the players uh play the game just because someone has certain gear does not mean they know how to play it well right you could copy a build piece by piece and if if the muscle memorization and rotation is 50 percent of your damage output roughly because if you slip up on rotation hence why i go static i don't do i don't do full parse servers like why don't you do a full parse it's irrelevant it's completely irrelevant. It's like feeding into like stupidity in its finest. A static value has to be set. It has to give me the value of the difference between each ability's maximum performance versus human error in saying, oh, well, I slipped with my rotation. Oh, well, this didn't proc due to chance or this didn't. Static's the way to go. It takes all of the proc and percentage values out of the equation and gives you the base value of the static amount. Exactly. I can take the info and apply it to any build. You don't just copy a build, believe it's the best, and then defend it to the grave. And that's what they do. That's what their little cult does. They, they take it. They think it's the best. And I don't. And when I tell people, people's like, oh, well, why aren't you using Moon Dancers? Why in the fuck would I use Moon Dancers? They need to buff it. They need to buff Miner Slayer. Miner Slayer at 5% currently, after all the value increase, is not performing well. Stamina users, it's worth the double stack because of the what you're gaining from the fifth piece bonus. So trial sets for stamina users still is very, very good. Magicka users, not so much, man. You'll lose. I'll take the loss on the value on the back end for the rest, though, but my front bar and my primary single bar will increase with the War Maiden significantly. It's just, it's hands down, it's a no-brainer. So I'm not going to go ahead and sit there and give people clickbait and tell people, oh, well, this is the way to go. It's just not the way it is, you know? I go ahead and I hit this and bap that up. I hate trying to get crit. It's way more. 14-4 versus 15-1. Shut the fuck up. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. 
I can take the info and apply. Oh, yeah. I take an efficient healer with Julie Seducers over an efficient healer with Spell... Damn right, Rock. Damn right. And that's the thing. Spell Power Cure is great. It applies the buff to the party. It's, it's a benefit. I'm not going to deny that. Worm is going to cost and cost reduction. But here's the deal. Spell Power Cure doesn't offer the most max into the healing value. You're going to sacrifice some of the healing value because there's some other sets out there will out-heal Spell Power Cure. It's just the truth. But you're banking on the other healer. So the Spell Power Cure buff can be applied. The DPS can amp up. And that's why it is what it is. Zoss needs to come out with a couple more competitive sets. And uh, since Worm doesn't stack, you only need one with Worm. You can run Mending, but Mending only applies to Physical. So if there's Spell Damage applied, it's not that good of a set either. Hence why I like the Remedy. If I can use a Remedy as a proc and apply the Minor Force, a lot of people were like, well, why don't you use Minor Force um, on, um, you know, a tar on Magicka Builds? Well, here's the problem with that. See, there's a difference here, and let's talk about this. When I look at Might of the Guild, I'm getting a 20%. Stam users aren't going to pop inner light on their bar to get this 20% buff, are they? No. But same thing with the Fighter's Guild into the Force, right? The Minor Force does a 10% for critical, right? So it's the Stam's buff. This is the Stam's buff to increase damage. Might of the Guild is the Magicka buff, right? So that's how you they offset those tiny differences. What is your favorite fire-based proc set? Ooh, you know, we were talking about Flame Blossom. They changed Flame Blossom like a little bit from the PTS. And I really like like with Empower, with the DK, like putting the Empowering Chains. And when you get that one second proc, it just lights under. And so it's like, it's an unavoidable when you chain them. When you can chain them and, and get a stun effect, pop, it just drops right underneath of them. So I like that because it's unavoidable at that time. You can't avoid it. SPC is also lacking for Nightblade healers, in my opinion. It can, definitely. It definitely can be a lacking. Um, you ha the set's good for the application. It is. It it's great for the application. But how can anyone think that gear makes you a better player? Gear does not press the right skill at the right time in the right situation right. That That's that's player driven skills, correct? But I wanted to come on here and I just want to say proof is in the pudding, guys. Proof is in the pudding. They want to go ahead and bash my my builds, let them all. Let them all do it. Let every one of them line up and try to say some shit. Cuz you guys are here. You guys are all here for a reason, man. You guys know that I was the first to talk when crafted sets were coming up. Debunked the spell power cure bullshit. Uh, talked about the penetrating value, over penetrating value before they did. You know, and that's my point. It's like, you know, I'm putting in the work. I'm putting in the work. The question of it is players don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Because they're biased. They want to find flaws. They want to find the flaws. You know? When will players understand the gear does not make the build efficient? It's the player that makes the build efficient. Right. You put, I, I miss Fang Rush. I really hope he comes in because I've always said the things that Fang Rush does with any class with different build configurations is amazing. What makes Fang Rush special to me is when he sees something, he sees what he's doing. He understands the application to be applied and how he's going to use that build for that application. It's amazing. Hey, Mystic, screw the warden, stupid bird spam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I take you to PvPing Storm. Yeah, I got caught. I was trying to stealth out. And it's uh, funny because they threw the bird, right? And I don't know if the lag. So a lot of our issues have been resolved. And they're trying to work on the pipeline. And it's diff you can tell the difference since they reverted. Uh, because what the pipeline offered. But they're trying to fix it. And I think that pipeline, once it's fixed, will be good. I don't know if it was a lag situation, but a bird came in, I stealthed, and it still hit me. So I don't know if the hit, um, like if if it fires before my stealth, if it still hits. If I stealth, it usually doesn't. Right, Rock? If my builds had a different player behind them, they'd definitely be bissed. Yeah, <laughs> they definitely would be bissed. Definitely. Joe, what's up, dude? Since dual wheel double nern, you have... I've been my go-to guy. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. 
It's like a guitar player. Eric Clapton sounds good on any guitar. You're damn right he does. That's Fang Rush in this game. Fang needs to come back. Come back, Fang, to come back. I know you get a little upset and mad, but you are one of the best, man. For a reason. And they all are all good. I'm not going to say they're not. Outcast has the best recovery time and, and any player that you can see. His rotation recovery is re ridiculous. Gilliam is good with the percentage values and how to look at a class and, you know, see some of the pros and cons. And, you know, he can be, you know, a little bit, you know, he can dissect things a little better. So I'm gonna, not going to say Gilliam. Gilliam's good. You know, he, he, he knows what he's talking about. He understands the rotations. He understands the limitations. You know, so I, I like Gilliam. I think Gilliam offers a service for this, for this. And I think, like Deltia, Deltia is fun to watch. He's just a nice guy. I, I love them all. Cypher PK, you know, he, once again, you know, he he plays every class. He tries to get better with every class. You like to watch Cypher. And they're all great. They're all great. But Joe Schmo, non-guitar player, sounds bad even if they use Eric Clapton's guitar. <laughs> So I'm not going to sit here and try to dog. Today, I'm not dogging the play, the YouTubers. I'm dogging their cult. I'm dogging, I am dogging their little cultists, you know? And I think it's a, our responsibility as YouTubers to set the record straight, you know? That's my problem with majority of the YouTubers. They say it's, it's absolute, but it's not. I'm really grateful for Zionide, Fang Rush, and yourself. Oh, thanks, man. That's that's some really big names in that to include me in. That's uh, thank you. Breaking up the meta a little. My Nightblade healer used to be used to get kicked just because he wasn't Templar. My Nightblade healer has seen 50k plus heals. Damn. Nightblade healer uh, actually out heals uh, every class in in uh, mob mob situations. So yeah, they they're they're the best mob healers, hands down. Nightblade healers suffer and sometimes single target. But, you know, if you know your rotation, you get through it, it's definitely worth it. Definitely. I love, I love Nightblade Healer. When it first drops out of the sky, the bird is going to hit the, its target since it's still considered an instant. Right. Yeah. It sucks, man. I got hit. Yeah. As soon as it dropped out, I cloaked and it still got me, man. Nerf Warden Bird Spam and Nerf Permablock Builds. Uh, yeah. Permablock Builds, though, um, I honestly think there should be a way to disrupt block. That's what I think. I think the, the counter, they need to come out with a counter that literally when you become stunned, like in effect, will break the, break the player's block. If they can do that, that would counter those builds. They don't have to change the, the, the block skill or anything. They just need to change an effect that actually breaks up block. When they can do that, you're good to go. It'll be great. So, anyways, guys, yeah, I wanted to come on here, man. I just wanted to do, I wanted to be a go on PTS. I wanted to show their configuration, my configuration for, from a static point, you know, per funnel, per ability. It carries across the board. It's always, I can put on any ability and it's going to carry. You never, never, and I will say this to every YouTuber out there who's doing uh, target dummy tests, you never bank a rotation based, uh, you know, from static. You don't steer static from rotation because human error is affected, right? You always, always, MMO 101, static rules all. Static is, is, it's, the, it's, 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 it's law. The more you're going to deal effect with a static effect, it carries based on those parameters. So, you're going to tell me, you're going to do a rotation, hit 40K, oh, this is this, when it's bullshit. You know, you nerf blocking, trial tanking will go out the window. Yeah, you can't nerf blocking. You actually have to put a counterplay. So basically, if I hit a tank, say I had a skill that stuns the tank, right? Say there's a stunning effect. It will throw their block. It will literally disrupt their block. It will literally like give make them like some of the C some of the CC effects in dungeons where a tank gets you know like whatever he can't block. You need to put those type of effects in PvP. I crit on blood feast synergy on max health tank. Put blood altar also isn't meta, so I'm playing it wrong. 
No, hell yeah. I, lo- I love the sarcastic, uh, you know, point there. You're definitely not playing it wrong, Destruction. If it works for you, you know, definitely, man. Keep it going. Keep it rocking. If a tank cannot block in a trial, the trial will never get completed right. So don't, I'm saying don't nerf the block. Add an effect to counter it, to counter someone who's trying to perma block. Once they can get disrupted and their shield and they basically their block drops, they're exposed. It's still, you're still not going to be able to 1v1 them, but you'll be able to take them out and be a little whatever. Sounds like you're tired of PvP uh, affecting PvE as well. And it does. And it carries over. And, I, and I'm definitely agreeing with Rock on this. Rock plays tank a lot. So from a tank's perspective, he, he knows, you know, if you, if you affect one aspect of this, it's going to carry. So you need to go ahead, not nerf any of the PvE situations. You need to apply a counterplay measure to counter the effect. That's how you have to do it. Zoss is, it's going to take time. Zoss will be on it. You know, they'll take care of it. Create a PvP skill that breaks a block. Right. That's all you have to do. Finally made it to live show. Hey, welcome, Scott. I'm, I'm wrapping up, though, dude. But I'm glad you stopped in, dude. So I basically went over in this video why I don't, do, why I don't use their configurations. And basically, it's, uh, to wrap it up, Moon Dancers is underperforming willpower. I've known that since Horns of the Reach. I'm the first to go over it. We were having that debate on PTS. People were trying to say I was full of shit, which I wasn't. But Willpower's outperforming Moondancer currently. 532, it's a good setup. I won't run it. Why? Because my double stack's outperforming. So, and Maelstrom and Master stat weapons, they're incentive, but definitely not a requirement, man. So, if you have it, kudos. If not, don't worry about it. Or a CP star to break blocks like the shield damage one. That's a good point, Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Add a CP passive. That will actually... They have one to increase blocking players. It's not enough. It, the damage, the, the modifier to that isn't enough to cut through the block. It's just not. Because block reduces damage. And that that passive needs, needs amped or something. I'm saying put counter a countermeasure in. That's it. You know, once they do that, you, but once again, it goes about build preference. You're going to have to sacrifice something to have that skill put on bar. So, and that's what the devs do in this game. And that's what they do really well. So, but yeah, guys, let the trolls come, let them come in, let them filter. But at the end of the day, 21 years, what you going to do when the mystic comes for you? That's it, guys. 21 years. It is what it is. Willpower over Moon Dancer and Double Stack over Willpower. It's the way it is. I hate to say it. Willpower is outperforming Moon Dancer. Moon Dan- now, I, now I'm going to say this. Moon Dancer will out DPS Willpower when all effects are applied. That means all buffs and Warhorn. When all of that's in line, the percentage value will carry over the base, right? It'll exceed it. Do you have 100% uptime on Warhorn? No. So, willpower is outperforming because the base damage is consistent. So, that's it. And then, double stack. We've been going over it. Who was the first to talk about the double stack? When they were still running 532, who was saying on one Tamriel, fuck the 532, go with the double. Go double stack. I was right here. I think it's hilarious you posted this today. I finally said settled on willpower just five hours ago. Dude, not you, you went the right way. I have trial sets. Now listen, I will if I have to, I will run one person. If I if nobody's running five piece of infowl, right? I will double stack a Julie with infowl. Why? Because that applied effect affects everybody's DPS. So if you're using uh, infowl for a five-piece proc to apply the damage to your party, for your party, at 100% uptime, that's the way to go. But you only need one player. It doesn't stack. It just resets. So if you have one player 
in your trial team with five piece in foul with their with a heavy in rotation you're good you can even if you wanted to you could even run in foul with something like um oh shit elegance so you have a, a higher end heavy in rotation if you wanted to but you'd have to take the thief mundus because your critical value would be way too low so you'd have to have, be looking at the thief mundus regardless possibly still running a, a precise so Five scathing, three willpower, two ice hearts. Definitely, man. Ran my first uh, trial wicked last night. Oh, cool. Nice, Todd. Congrats, man. King, this is why I do five netch and five spider. See, right there. And I love that, that you just said that, King. Because I, I run five netch too. And so you're running, no, you're running maybe one piece monster, double stacked. And you're getting the best with dual, dual destro. That's badass, dude. Are you running dual destro? I'm thinking you're running dual destro unless you got a switch, but you might be running monster set, but that's badass. That's a badass config. I will always choose a set with 100% uptime versus a proc set uh, every time. It always depends on me, Rock, but yeah, I can see where you're coming from on that because it's guaranteed, the applied, it's static, there, and it's going to amp up the effects. You're right. So there's what uh, he's saying is if I ran a proc, say I don't use war maintenance, I run a proc, that's going to affect my base value of my skill. And he's right, 100% right, because I'd be losing 386 for on the funnel for the proc effect. I'd be giving up. I'd be sacrificing. So, yeah. So that's what it is. You know, it's like the full, like I said, full metal alchemist. You know, we got to take a look at it like equivalent exchange. You know, you have to give up something of equal value to gain. And that's what the game's designed to do. You have to give up something to gain somewhere else. That's what your character sheet reflects. So at the end of the day, they're skilled gamers. They are. And I'm not better than them. I'm not saying I am. I just know what I'm doing. 21 years. Hello. I will say it again for my trolls. Not for you guys. For the trolls. 21 years. I'm an old fucker. Old as hell. Been doing this a long time. Long time. So, there it is. Said and done. I wish them the best, though. If any of these YouTubers start working for Zoss, I'll start maybe questioning Zoss's, uh, um, you know, mentality there. You know? Unless they got, you know, ex you know, some way of reading C++ and no C++. Gotta go. Be dad. Stay awesome, Raven. Thank you, Destruction. Thank you, man. And I'm sorry for earlier. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. 100%. Do not like to rely on random chance. Nope. And, so, and you don't have to in this game. The devs make it that way. Devs do a great job. Zen, uh, Zoss is really good at it. So there it is, guys. I'm wrapping this up. I'm calling it for the day. But when they come and they start hating on me, let them come. Bring it in. Bring it in, boys and girls. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. This is Mystic Raven. I'm Mystic Raven, the CSO Daily. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.